Okay, so something interesting I found um, in the text, they talked about how you could record financial events um, in ledgers. Did you guys follow that? Or you remember reading about that? So any financial event that has to do with um, some, something, an item of interest. So if it's um, wages or um, human resources, you put it all in one ledger. And then you transfer it later, right, to your balance sheet. And that way you have everything um, as, as the events occur, you put them somewhere before you update your financial statements. So this is, um, this is, can you guys see that? This is just from the book. Is it big enough? I could get a bigger version. Um, I think it's big enough. You think it's big enough or you can follow? Oh, here, I can make this bigger in my... And put it on my um, PowerPoint. I'll share my PowerPoint instead. Oh, here. You see that? I don't like that view. Um, I want to close this. How do I close this? All right, so you have assets and liabilities on either side and assets reflect what the um what the business owns and the right side liabilities expresses who owns it and it divides up broadly speaking into um liabilities that this the um, that have to be paid out and then what's net or residual what's left over is what is actually the um the income of the firm that's called net assets so the terminology used these are all for the healthcare sector and in particular this is the uh, financial position for a not-for-profit okay so they they're using the terminology that um you may come across. And then they also have uh, an example. The only thing that's gonna change for the um, for-profit hospital, for-profit for um, healthcare provider is going to be this section. It's just gonna have a different name. So looking at this, um, so let me go back a bit. So assets should equal liabilities and owner's equity, which are called net assets. Put that in. Professor. Uh-huh. Can we go back to the 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 di the the figure, the last figure? Something I didn't get that the textbook said is that the actual um cash is I think it was like fifteen thousand or something like that. It's like it's not one hundred and fifty dollars. Like I was confused. Oh yeah on that. Oh, okay okay. All right. So you can add three zeros onto all these numbers. It's just simplified. So it was just the, because I didn't get why the book threw that in, that it's like thousands. It's not because like- All these numbers are a hundred, like they're in thousands of dollars. So this is 150,000, 220,000, mm -hmm. but they don't get into all the details because accountants are allowed to do that. Accountants mm -hmm. are allowed to round up and all those details, they call it immaterial. They really just want the larger numbers and it doesn't have to be exact. You can see, um, so you get that? It doesn't have to be the, to the to the sense. So they, they use that to just simplify the presentation. So this is actually 43 million here. 
Is that okay? So you just add three zeros on all these numbers. Let's see what it says here. Um, let me Is see. Is that a calculation you do all the time or you just assume that they yeah. dropped the three zeros? Um, I think just in the presentation of the of this table, just because look how small, if I add three zeros, it's even gonna be smaller, you know? So I think they just did it for presentation purposes. But uh, yeah, if they're not gonna put in the hundreds of dollars that um, that align with these these figures, then yeah, they just drop it. But I've seen I've seen statements with with three zero you know with all the number in there, but yeah, but you you it, there should be like it should say something like the title should be if I added it um it should say in thousands of dollars. I'm going to show you an example where we have that, so you can get used to that. So I can say in thousands of dollars. That's too small. That's too small. I'll put it at 20. Okay, so everything is in thousands of dollars. And this is figure 6.1. Does it still bother you? <laughs> Did I help at all? So there's just three zeros on the end of all those numbers. So this number is, like I said, this is 2,319,000. This is 832,000. This is 46,000. This is 3 million. Okay. No, yes, Patty. It's okay. Okay, sorry, I wasn't looking at you. You were nodding. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Um. It just threw me off when I, then I started thinking about what calculation didn't I see that they did. It was, it just threw me off. Let me, let me check the book, what it says, just to make sure that I'm understanding. So it says it here, right, right before the presentation or I guess, right, right before the presentation. So let's see, it says. Good evening, all. Sorry. Echo, echo, echo. Not sure why. You have maybe your phone on or not sure. Can you tell me, Patty, where it says that? What page or? I don't know. I'm trying to find where it says it. You can search it. But I, I'm pretty sure that's what they meant. I'll try and search it. Yeah, I'll, I'll try. I'll just keep looking. Go ahead. Don't don't stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Um, location seven. Three. Okay. Yeah. So page. It's on. Uh. Well, I don't know. Everyone has, I guess this has different pages because I made the size of the font bigger, but um, it's oh, page, that, uh -huh. page 113, page 113 at the top, um, or location the seven, top, right? Seven, three, it says, for example, the catch, the cash entry yeah. of 150 in table six, one is really 15,000. Yeah. So you just add three zeros at the end to everything. Yeah. I see it. Yeah. I can show everybody. my kindle so here okay so that's what after um mine's at location seven three six zero mm -hmm. thousands of dollars okay so back to this um lydia do you have experience with uh with accounting oh i can't hear you Hi. I don't know. Oh, okay, okay. Let's let's don't worry about it. We can skip it. They're both in the same room with their with their volume. Oh. <laughs> Talking into her mic, we can hear her mic as well. So when either of you speak, 
it echoes because you guys are in such close proximity to each other. I was I muted. Think. I'm I'm muted until now. Okay, um, it's okay. Yeah, just keep stay muted, Lydia. Don't worry. Okay, so um, so these are in thousands of dollars. I mean, just add three zeros at the end of everything, and looking at assets and liabilities on both sides, the items are included in order of liquidity. So what does liquidity mean? What's liquidity referred to? Liquidity means um, whatever assets you have that you can turn quickly into cash or yeah. available cash that you can spend immediately. Right, so liquidity refers to the ability to convert the asset into cash. So cash is the most liquid because cash is cash, right? And that's on the top. And so there's $150,000 of cash. Next are marketable securities. That would be any, any investments that the, the company, the entity um, is considering selling. So they keep them separate from something below called investments. So they could be investing in in stocks and bonds. And these this is the portion of them that they're ready to just sell if they need to. And they valued them at $220,000. This is actually what they, um, this would have been what they, the par value of those assets, stocks and bonds. Um, and I'll explain, we'll talk more about bonds. We talked about stocks before. So that's um, what they, they, if they had to, if there was an emergency and they have cash for the emergency, but they could also sell these assets and they believe those ones could be sold readily for 220,000. Um, and that's separate from the thing down here that are assets that they claim they, they intend to hold on to. So these could be bonds that um, have a long maturity or they could be assets that they just, uh, sorry, they could be stocks that they don't they don't plan on selling anytime soon. All right, so then after that, we have um, accounts receivable net of $436,000 allowed for bad debts. Did you guys read about this? So what are accounts receivable? You know, accounts receivable. You guys can look back in your book if it helps. So I, I want to do this just because this is um this is the most important thing to take away. Would it be every the like monies that are owed? Exactly. So these are, so for services, so if this is a hospital, accounts, like different accounts. Yeah, this, these are services that you've rendered and you're waiting for payment. Okay. So it could be services to um, individuals. It could be services or um, uh, commitment to a, um, a group plan, you know, of, of, uh, of clients. So it could be our patients. So anyway, these are what you expect to be getting. And one thing to say is I've started at the top talking about cash and marketable securities, and they're all under the title of current assets. So these assets, by being current, they're put here because it's believed that they could be um, converted to cash or in the case of accounts receivable, settled within a year. Okay, so it, it's separate from the ones that are known as fixed. So you put it here thinking you're going to get it within a year and you allow for, you, you make an estimate based on history um, or based on, you know, knowing your clients or patients that you're not going to get $436,000 and you allow, that's the allowance for bad debts. And so this figure will not include that $436,000. So you just make a note of it here. Professor. Mm. Professor, I hear you. When I worked in a school, and I still don't know, you hear me? 
You're kind of yeah. cutting out, Romy. I don't know why. It's in and out. Oh. Go my ahead. internet is really off. My internet's really off today. When I worked as a nurse manager in a school, we would have to um, they would we would have to budget like our estimates for the year, and for example, let's say like the water that we would get for the office and stuff. Would that be something under current assets, like our monthly water gallon cooler? Um. So that okay so you you know you're going to pay for that right so that's going to go under um your liabilities yeah your expenses that's going to be on the other side unless you so own the water under, that wouldn't go under current assets that would not go under current assets no no that wouldn't you know, go under current assets no account, that would be under accounts payable things you have to pay for on the um, other side these are good questions okay so um Everybody okay with the first three and the idea, the concept of current assets. So then inventory. So you need inventory to operate, right? So uh, in current assets, you have operating, you know, items for operating the business or operating the facility. So inventory, what would be an inventory? Everything in, in stock, right? Um, that you have available. And so we're going to allocate um, $832,000 for inventory, or that's the value of the, of the inventory we have towels and, and gauze and suitors and IV bags. And you know, better than me, what you have there in storage. Then there's, um, prepaid assets. What are prepaid assets? I said things that you paid for in advance. Like? Like your rent. I don't know. Yeah, we'll check. So well, it's like, um, it represents the assets that you have been paid for and has not yet been used, but will use within one year. Right. So, so inventory as well, inventory ends up in current assets, just like other prepaid assets until you use them. Once you use them, they become an expense and end up on, um, they, they clear here and they go on the other side. So, um, they, they, they operate like that. Mm -hmm. So like you said, rent, TY, Fire insurance premiums is another example they mention. Okay, and then you total these. And so it's pretty standard. And so it's three, um, $3 million in current assets. Any questions about that? It's pretty good so far. So then, and um, so then we get to fixed assets. So these are these are harder. Um, you're not going to be able to sell them readily or within a year or anything like that. Fixed assets, and we combine property, plant, and equipment. And um, so that would be your if it's the hospital, and then you have um, your your power or your um you know the the center where you you uh operate energy to uh, in in you know for emergency cases um you have your equipment that's just running everything your mris your your scanners um furniture so that's going to be property plant and equipment and it's worth $43 million here. Then it's explained that, okay, so if you guys read the text, there was something about depreciation. What was that explanation? And I'll, I'll, I'll explain it better, but what, what's the relationship? What is 
depreciation accumulated and what's net, what's happening there? They said something like buildings depreciate that they are believed to be a declining value. Right. So buildings, equipment, and plants will depreciate over time. But <clears throat> this is their initial value. They're, this is the value. This is their value together combined. But you have to account for in assets that time has passed and there's been wear and tear. And so the value has gone down. And in fact, in accounting, you can claim depreciation as an expense. And we're going to do an example to show that. Okay. So what that means is like, you're going to buy the asset, but then in accounting, you don't, you don't use, you don't put any capital. So a building or any equipment, any capital, huh? you know, think items that, that allow you to perform or offer services. Um, you don't put it as an expense when you purchase it. It enters as an asset. And then over the years, you expense the wear and tear over time. And this is done so that as an incentive, you'll see it's as an incentive for business because um, even though business is in the case of a not-for-profit, you're not gonna pay taxes on that, but for-profit businesses can depreciate from taxable income. They can, they can remove as an expense any depreciation. Okay, so they, they actually experience tax savings as a result of um, buying capital. So this is an incentive for doing business. This is an incentive for growing businesses uh, from the perspective of the government that's trying to facilitate the, the economy, you know, the running of the economy, the stability of the economy. So, okay, so this minus this gives you net property, plant, and equipment. And we're going to do an example or an, how is depreciation calculated so you can see where this number comes from, okay? Well, not exactly this number, but depreciation comes from. Then, the, okay, so anybody have questions about that? So this has to be calculated um, each year. And then this is accumulated because they give an example and they say, if you buy a $40 million building, no, wait, what was the example that was given about the for, let me see. Yeah, $40 million cost is actually depreciated over 40 years. 10 years has passed. And each year they're allowed to depreciate 10 million, for instance. So then <clears throat> that would be um or 1 million, sorry. Was it 1 million? Let me see. I'm looking for that example. It was 40 million. Yeah, it was three years. Passed, by one. And then 30 million. Yeah. Depreciate expense of 1 million per year. Uh, on a $40 million building for 10 years. So then it depreciates by 10 million. And so it's net is 30 million. And those numbers, those are just round numbers, but there's actually a, um, a method to doing this. And I'm going to show you because I think it's important. So beyond that discussion about the asset, there is this element here called sinking fund. Did you understand what the sinking fund was for? Oh, T.Y., I don't hear you. I see you. I said, it's like maybe money kept aside for a particular purpose, either for replacing something, replacing right. a, maybe generator plant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So exactly. So that's money set aside. That's going to, um, it's called a sinking fund because it can be used and withdrawn from to pay for um, repairs, wear and tear on your fixed assets, okay? Then there's the investments that I mentioned to you that are just held by the firm, the corporation, the company there so it's it's held it could be stocks and bonds and they are there's no intention of selling them anytime soon and then there's this component called goodwill 
What is goodwill? Charity donations? No. <laughs> a good reputation. But but Romy, that that's there's something about charity he, here, but not not exactly on this a schedule. But okay, go on. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's not tangible. Like for instance, I favor party. Okay, let me Just let me say something here. So a lot of these items here are common in a balance sheet or what we call a statement of financial position. Goodwill is not necessarily always there. Okay, so goodwill arises, like Ty mentions, um, as an intangible asset, the value of which is determined by actions that were taken. So this goodwill could have come as a result of this firm having acquired, so say this was a healthcare organization and they acquired a lab. And when they bought that lab, they paid more for the lab than was a, the valuation on their financial statements. So they paid more for that lab. That's gonna go into their property, fixed asset. And then they can't put the value of the actual structure in fixed assets. So where are they gonna put that little extra that they paid for it? They're gonna put it in goodwill because it represents, they paid more because they feel that, you know, there's they have the sense that it's worth it to them because there's a good reputation, a good location. It has a history. They're gonna get the, uh, the, the, the clients, you know, the, the traffic that's coming through that lab. So they are going to, they're paid more for it. So that number actually comes out of a purchase and that goes, it can't go with the property because that's not what the property's worth, but it goes into goodwill. Okay. So not all, um, firms are going to have goodwill on their balance sheet, but that they put it here just to explain that that's possible. And to in, and to include the idea, the concept of intangible assets. Now, tangible assets, property, plant, and equipment depreciate over time. They experience wear and tear. They break down. Goodwill also experiences a dim, diminishment in value, but they use a different term. They call it amortization as the value goes down. And um, it's just, it's handled in a similar way but it's distinguished because you're dealing with an intangible asset. So we're going to look at we're going to look at the case of fixed assets and the tangible assets to talk about depreciation after we get through this. Okay, any questions about assets? So those are the main things to say. Do you feel better about the assets column? No, Patty. <laughs> Shaking her head. Mm -hmm. I it's just it's just a lot to know where to put what because even just for the um the inventory I think it was yeah. and I think it was another one where you pay you're paying for things I think it falls under the fixed assets I just thought they were both within the same thing okay so you're paying so inventory and prepaid assets they fall they they're separated but it yeah. sounds like the same thing. Oh, um, it, they're treated the same way, but prepaid, so inventory is actual um, stuff you buy and prepaid assets are like, we, we separated them by like services, I guess goods versus services maybe. Um, let's see if that... Also, then if you go to the equipment, because equipment and the inventory, what equipment? Oh, you have I see what you're saying. Them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Remembering that these are divided by what could be sold or they intend to sell within the year. So the intention divides them. Uh, okay. So that's the keyword there. Yeah. Okay. So if you're intending to use it up, um, it goes as inventory. If you're intending... Um, so these are prepaid assets relevant to their use within the year. It goes here, but these are fixed. These are going to stay for a long time. You're not going to touch those or convert them anytime soon. That That's what you need. Good. Thank you for commenting. All right. Um, let's look at liabilities. 
So similarly, it, they go by liquidity. Um, so we separate into current liabilities. So these must be paid within a year. Okay, and these are long-term that they're paid over time uh, beyond a year. And then there's the net that we'll talk about. So, um, so wages payable, a million dollars. Account accounts payable. So that's for um, paying for you know your water, like uh, Romy was mentioning. Um, any expenses are going to fall under accounts payable. Well, not all like expenses for things that you're going to use up. Um, like I mentioned, once you use up um, inventory, that's going to go into expenses. Notes payable. Okay, so what's the difference between accounts payable and notes payable? Notes payable are obligations to repay a loan. For instance, we know uh, accounts payable are amounts owed to suppliers like pharmacy. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Okay, so these, um, so some obligations to pay loans will be short, like within the year, and others will be um, payable beyond that, right? So mortgage payable is down here because that's going to be mortgage spread out over time. So that's long-term liabilities, but that's, that has to be paid within the year will be up here, notes payable. Deferred revenue, what was deferred revenue? So it says um, that these represents payments that the organization has received in advance of okay. providing its services. Right, so they're, they, they owe the service, right? That's why it's on that side. It's on the right side because they have they have to either come up with the money to pay it back or deliver the service. So that's owed. Okay. Taxes payable is pretty clear. And that's it. And you add them up. Then we go to long-term liabilities. So that's mortgages payable on those build that building. If you're paying or some uh yeah, so if you have some some building or some facilities where you're paying mortgage, that's going to go there. What's bonds payable? A formal borrowing arrangement. Well, this this in this organization could have gone public. In other words, they issued bonds to borrow money, right? So a bond is an agreement to pay a certain amount, usually twice a year. Um, to the lender. And so it's easy enough to calculate what you owe on that in terms of interest payment. So that's like an interest payment that's made. So those are bonds payable. Wow. Or if um, a certain arrangement was made for a, a loan, but usually uh, bonds, yeah, that's reserved for issuing bonds. Okay, that's long-term liability. So this is what is owed. This is what the firm owns. So the remainder, so what's left over when you take assets minus, minus liabilities is the profit or the income 
or in this case, we call it net assets. Okay, so for a healthcare organization or the healthcare sector, we refer to this for not for profit, it's called net assets. And it's distinguished between net assets without donor restrictions and net assets with donor restrictions. So um, in a not-for-profit, the, the owners are the, the members or the donors. And they may have specified that um, some assets, so there, some of the asset or some of the value is in endowment and that's not supposed to be touched. So that has restrictions. And then the rest would be without without restriction. So um, when it's not a, a not-for-profit or let me see here. So we usually call it owner's equity. And for a for-profit, firm, that would be the value of stock outstanding or the value shareholder wealth or shareholder equity. Okay, so for a not-for-profit, it's um, it has um, members and it operates for the members, which is equivalent to a for-profit that's operating for the owners. And the owners of a of a public company with shareholders. So a public company is a company that um, issued stock to, to take on partners as owners, but they're also private for-profit uh, entities that um, don't take on shareholders, but they, they create shares, but they don't go public and they just like their family, you know, so four members of the family own the company and they split it four ways and they all have an equal share in the company. So this we still use the same terminology, but um, it's not a public company, it's a private company. All right. So I hope that's a little bit better. Let's um let's see. So there's a lot of information in the book, okay? And I don't expect you to know all that. That's a resource. That's a reference book for you. Um, if you bought the physical book or if you have the Kindle, the Kindle will not expire. So you have that as a reference and you can go back to it. Um, but the main thing is that you feel comfortable with what's here, some, something familiar. What I want to do now, while it's fresh, let's talk about uh, capital budgeting. And I the have more questions. Yes, Patty. Why did it just both break even on both sides? So it, this, this is the whole thing. Anytime. So as a, there's a financial event, the, um, the item, the, the chain is entered into the, the balance sheet to keep the, the, this fundamental equation of assets equaling liabilities plus shareholders equity or owners equity equal. So it will always balance out. And you're like, how? But that's the, that's the, so they say there's not, it's not a science. It's some, um, it is, uh, it's a set of rules that make it all balance out. So then in the event that they don't balance out, or do you uh -huh. have a different amount? Would you have to like go back and see if there's like an error in one of the columns? Exactly. Yeah. You'd have to go and you have to keep it. They have to balance out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in chapter, in chapter seven, we talk about looking and analyzing the fin fin uh, financial statement or the balance sheet more carefully. Right now, I just want to talk about what these amounts are. Okay. Um, 
All right, so I want to share this case with you. I want to tie it back to the finance that we learned and introduce the idea of taxes paid and depreciation. So we'll have the opportunity to do that with this example. And I think it'll take us the class to do this and I'll put it up on as a uh, week seven material, okay? Um, so I'm going to, I, I'll just email it to you or do you want it on the platform? Do you want it on Blackboard? Either or is fine for me. Okay. No preference from anyone else? Yeah, I'm okay with Blackboard. Okay, I'll, I'll put it in Blackboard. I think Blackboard will make it easy, easy to assess. Mm -hmm. I'm always having to look for you in my email because some, for some reason, you don't come in like other people. Oh, yeah, because I'm outside the organization. And because we use Microsoft and I don't like Microsoft. Use Outlook. You just make your life difficult. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm going to put it there into um, a week seven folder. It's called Quality Incorporated. So go into week seven and find that document and I'll project it here. All right. Okay, so I know you're learning, we're learning accounting and we're going to get to the place where we talk about the cash flow statement. So this is the time I can tell you that in, uh, accounting and finance are a little bit different in their conventions. And I'll point the thing, these things out. The main thing that concerns you is depreciation is treated differently 
in accounting than in in finance. Does anybody know why? It has to do with depreciation. <laughs> in accounting, we put depreciation on the balance sheet, right? It's it it shows up there as depreciation on the balance sheet. But in the cash flow statement, depreciation is not a cash flow. So depreciation happens, but it's not, it does, it's nobody, it's not changing hands, right? It's depreciation is just the wear and tear of equipment, machinery, computers, buildings. Um, and the IRS allows you to expense that amount. As a result, your taxable income goes down and you have tax savings. Tax savings are actually a cash flow. I don't expect you guys to, to remember that and I will repeat it a few times, but basically when it comes to depreciation, it's treated differently on the cash flow statement than on the balance sheet, statement of financial position. Okay, so here's my example so we can actually work with something. What we're going to do is, is a budgeting case. Is this Quality Incorporated is the largest commercial clinical diagnostic laboratory company in the U.S. and probably the world. They have locations in 63 cities in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, Europe, Middle East, and the Caribbean. Revenue last year totaled $5 billion. So what we're going to do here is read this case, identifying cash flows, that are incremental cash flows as a result of pursuing this project that I'm going to um, show you, demonstrate. So remember when we talked about finance, we talked about um, investment opportunities, right? And we talked about the net present value. So we're gonna solve this problem, this case, by determining the net present value of the future cash flows to see if it's uh, worth pursuing. You with me so far? So we're gonna read through this and I'm gonna highlight in different colors. Um, well, let's just talk about it first and then I'll use the color scheme, but okay. So let's read through this and I'm gonna highlight what looks like it's important or incremental. So if we are to, um, open a new lab in New York City, an MRI lab in New York City. What cash flows will accrue as a result? That's basically what we're looking for. So last year, okay, so there's this $5 billion. Does the $5 billion go into my analysis at all, do you think? If if we is that what you made? So that was that what the, that's asset? what Quality Inc made already. Yeah, it's done. Correct. Yeah. But we okay. want to see what we spent. What we want to do is we want to see what will be the present value of future cash flows if we open this lab? Is that not considered current asset or like? So, well, in this case, in terms of valuing this project or this investment opportunity, this is known as a sunk cost, like, or this is like, it has nothing to do with this project analysis. Okay. So this one I'm going to cross out. Right. Yeah because it has nothing to do with whether I pursue this project. It's not an incremental cash flow. So we're gonna, we're reading for incremental cash flows. We're trying to identify incremental cash flows. And that's, that's the past. It's already transpired. Uh -huh. Pardon? 
Okay, so then last year, a consultant was hired to prepare a test marketing analysis at a cost of $2 million. Is that an incremental cash flow? No. No, it was right? paid up. It's already a sunk cost, it's already done. So also that's not an incremental cash flow. If I call it anything, I'm gonna call it a sunk cost. This is a sunk cost, it's already spent. We can't change that, that we already spent that money. It's helped us um, get this far, but. Okay. Oh. Given the developments in the diagnostic industry and the need to remain flexible, the consultant recommended running the lab for only four years. So this number is important because this number, so, so the lab will be run for four years. We're going to do an analysis of uh, the future cash flows for the upcoming four years because after that we have to reevaluate and decide if we're going to sell the lab mm -hmm. or we're going to upgrade the lab and it'll be a completely different lab um, after four years we want to remain flexible okay so it's a four-year project analysis her prediction indicates that each year quality will provide 6,000, 14,000, 20,000, and 12,000 MRIs to patients, like services, during the first, second, third, and fourth years of the project, respectively. Are those numbers important to me? Yes. Okay. So those are the units. And I'll use the color red. The consultant recommends that quality charge $2,000 for each MRI. Do I need that number? Yes. Because that'll help determine what? Revenues, right? Revenues, revenues, call that revenues. Because it'll be $2,000 for 6,000 MRIs. How much did we make that first year? Six thousand. So six thousand units, so six thousand MRIs, two thousand dollars each for a total of twelve million. Yeah. So just look at the zeros, ladies. So there's three zeros here and three zeros here. So that's six zeros, and you know that six zeros is twelve is a million. So, and then six times two is twelve. Yeah, it's twelve million. Thank you. She forecasts that if Quality chooses to locate a new lab in New York City, it will compete with its other labs in the surrounding area. As a result, Quality will lose sales of 100, 200, 400, and 300 MRIs during the first, second, third, and fourth years of the project. The estimated average price of MRIs at other locations is also $2,000. Do I need this number, these numbers? Yes. What would you call these? This is a money being lost. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's lost, right? So it's it's um it's lost revenue. We can call it lost revenue. So so let me put it. I'll put some names here. So this would be um revenue, or to be specific, it's incremental revenue. And then it's incremental in the sense that it happens because of the of pursuing the lab as an investment. Um, and then this set of numbers is going to be called incremental lost revenue. Okay, so there's a lot of there's a lot of detail here. 
Um, don't let that overwhelm you. We're going to separate everything with colors, okay? So I used red for a reason. Okay, so those were the revenues, but usually when you offer a service, you can make money, but there's an expense of operating or providing the service, right? In this case, the average variable operating cost per MRI is $1,000. So do we need that? Yes. And we're going to call it Take a guess. Um, it's going to be lost revenue. Well, because you're spending it. No, well, we'll call it an expense because we have to operate at the expense. So we're just playing with this terminology here. All right. So we have revenues, we have lost revenue, we have an ex we have expense, and notice we're just analyzing what's here. In reality, you would have to gather all this information and all these estimates, right? You'd have to gather all this information to be able to think about what what's going to transpire in the future for your budgeting. All right. So they note that since quality has a vacant office space near Harlem area, near the Harlem area, there's no need to rent or purchase office space. The annual rental cost of similar real estate is $1 million. Does that, is that an important amount? Is that a cash flow, incremental cash flow from my project analysis? No. No, it's not incremental. Okay, we're gonna leave that one for now. It is incremental, but I'm gonna leave it for now because I, I, let's do some other stuff and then we'll go back <laughs> because um, I wanna get to the depreciation stuff and we'll go back to that, but that is incremental. This is all incremental. So I'm gonna hi highlight this and I'll explain it. This is actually called opportunity cost. Okay, so when you do a cash flow analysis, cash flow analysis considers economic costs. It's different from accounting. So I'm just trying to put it in here so that we don't lose what we learned about cash flows. And um, and we're, we're gonna do this example with depreciation and hopefully it's an introduction to the cash flow statement we're gonna see. The annual rental cost of similar real estate is $1 million. I'm gonna call this opportunity cost. So the idea is that this is, um, this building that we have has a market value. And whether we were using it or not, that's an opportunity cost, a million dollars. We could have made a year for it. So if we take that and we use it rather than renting it out and we use it for this um, for this lab, we're losing revenue. So we have to do better than that. So that has to go into our analysis because we have to make more money than a million dollars to make this uh, purchase worth it wow. or this 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 operation worth it so it's going to go in as an opportunity cost we'll talk about it again when we get there so i put all those in red because those all have to do with um what i'm going to call income so you got revenues expenses and some costs right lost revenue you have opportunity that's all going to go together in our analysis. All right, now let's talk about what we're, what capital expenditure we're gonna make. And we're gonna talk about the IRS. <clears throat> oh, I put airlines here. Why the vice president customer service operations. 
So the vice president of Quality Inc. customer service and operations determined <clears throat> that for the predicted services, Quest, why do I call it Quest? I think I, I have some typos here. Quality, I'll put up the revised one when I'm done. Inc. must purchase four new MRI machines. The purchasing department has decided that the most suitable MRI machine will cost $1 million each. Is that going to be an incremental cash flow? Did money change hands? Money is going to change hands. Money is going to change hands, right? So this is going to be a, a an incremental cash flow. I'm going to put it in color green, and I'll explain why later. The Internal Revenue Service includes equipment like MRIs in the seven-year depreciation period or seven-year depreciation schedule, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. The maker's table indicates that 28.6% is the appropriate double declining balance depreciation rate until the switch to straight line depreciation in the fifth year. Don't worry about any of this stuff. Basically, I'm gonna show you how to diminish the value of the asset over time. Deciding which schedule of depreciation the asset falls into is just takes some time or some experience, but basically buildings take longer to break down, right? To wear and tear than electronic equipment. So buildings will have 15 or 20 year depreciation period. Mm -hmm. um, but this equipment has set, it's electronic and it's um, gonna be uh, industrial or commercial use. So it's, it's gonna fall under seven year depreciation. An MRI lasts for 30, and I'm gonna talk about all this in a moment. Oh, let me show you the maker's table. I have, also have to post that. Let me put it up for you. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll put the numbers in this sheet too. Okay, so these are the different schedules. Um, so like uh, computers, they can be depreciated over three years. Um, five years are some other types of electronics, larger electronic devices, seven years depreciation. Okay, so we're gonna use the seven year schedule, this one here. And um, and I'll bring this up later. So I'll put this up on the platform as well. So these numbers come from the IRS and I'll show you how to use them. So I think the important thing to say is the seven year schedule as stated in the case um, is, is like 28.6, it's 30%. So in the first year, however, even though you start at 30% or 28.6, you can only depreciate half of the asset in the first year. So you can only claim as an expense to the government who allows you to do this to incentivize business. Otherwise, you know, you know, buying that kind of investment, you need a little bit of a push or incentive to, to pursue this kind of risk, right? You're, you're gonna buy this big machine. Um, so 14.3% uh, is not 28.6, it's just half. So what the government is doing here is they're allowing you to depreciate it, but in the first year, they're discouraging um, companies from waiting till December 31st to purchase an item. Because why? Well, let's say you're running an operation, you're, you have this lab, and um, and um, you... Um, And so you have already, let's say you're having, you're running other labs and you have MRIs and you're thinking, oh, we got to, we got to replace one of these. 
You might just wait to December 31st. Why would you do that? Well, because you can do, you could, if the government didn't do this, you could depreciate it for 28.6%. So 30% of the value, how much money is that on a million dollar machine? What's 30% of 1 million? It's $300,000. You can expense $300,000 and that reduces your taxes by quite a bit. And I'm going to show you those numbers. You're going to be shocked, okay? So to discourage, because the government doesn't want everybody buying things on December 31st, that doesn't that doesn't allow for a stable economy of people, you know, moving activity, economic activity through the year. So instead they say, no, you only get half of it to discourage people from trying to, um, you know, whatever, just rational people trying to save a buck, right? And it could create problems. So they want to disincentivize that and you can only depreciate half of it in the first year. And then after that, it declines. So these numbers are calculated, um, even though it's seven, even though it says seven years, it goes down to the eighth because you see it follows a pattern and then it goes like straight. You can only depreciate it like 8.9% for three years. And then this is just whatever's left over to completely eliminate the book value, what you call in the counting, the book value of the asset. Okay. All right. So this will all make sense to you when we're done. Unfortunately, not right now, but back to the case. All right. So, so the IRS allows you to use the um, seven year depreciation schedule that we will use at the end of the project. Even though the MRI machine is still operational, likely it's still going to work. Um, you're going to wrap up this project and you're going to sell the MRI machines and you're going to buy whatever new equipment's out there, top of the line, right? To do whatever you have planned in the future. But we're just going to analyze this project. So we're going to sell this machine and we anticipate that we can sell it for $300,000. We have four of them. So this $300,000 that we can sell it for, is that going to be an incremental cash flow? Yes, right? Because it's going to change hands. We're going to get the money. They're going to get the machines. So that's going to be an incremental cash flow. We need the, I don't know why I have it quest. So we are going to um, think about the $300,000 we're gonna get for the machine. When you sell something like an asset that you've been depreciating for a period of time, like if you if you use a, um, so if you're depreciating, like we'll just stick with this example. So you've depreciated this asset in the books and your accounting books and the government has allowed you to expense the costs over time. And as a result, you earned or you received or you experienced tax savings that can be quite substantial. Um, then at the end, you're gonna sell this asset. If you sell it for more than it's worth on the books, what happens? So if you sell your house for more than, um, its value, the more than you purchased it, not your house, but a second house. Let's say you have a cottage or a second house. Usually second, second homes, you have to pay something called capital gains. Have you ever heard of that? So you have to pay, if you sell it for more than it's worth or more than you purchased it or more than you, um, you have on record um, purchased it, you have to pay capital gains to the government, which is horrible. Um, but they do that also to keep the cost. Um, well, just there, it's a tax grab, yes, but also um, you know, you've made some value and they want a piece of that. Okay, so you've you've experienced some increased um in economic but there's well a loophole for that too though. Because if you buy if you use it to buy something else, then you don't have to pay capital gains. If you say it again for the house or for this? The house, I don't know about this, but the house. 
if you uh, do sell and you make a profit, you take that money, you buy another property, you don't have to pay capital gains. Okay. Yeah. So there's things. Um, so yeah, there are other things that you can, um, yeah. If you could, if for this, you're talking about a second property. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to know. Right. So in this case, we don't have the option. I don't think. So, all right. Or so then. Anything uh, trust. They said you have to have to Lydia, sorry. You said that if you put it in a living trust and if you sell it, then you don't pay for that. Oh, for the house? Yeah. 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 Let's talk. They will hear you from here. Okay. You guys are very close to each other. All right. So um, now you're seeing some terminology you we just saw here okay so here is what do we call these amounts here as a category the current asset excellent you see it current assets are these three and these three are liability exactly or... yep 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 you get it so current assets and current liabilities and um, so we anticipate, quality anticipates that it's going to need inventory amounting to $60,000 upfront to operate. So these are for operating expenses, operating the business, right? Daily operations. That's current assets and current li liabilities. By the end of the first year, we're going to need $85,000 worth and then $105,000 worth and so on. By the fourth year, we don't need anything. But so remember how we looked at those cash flow timelines. Whenever I mark the year, it's at the end of the year, right? So these are end of the year amounts. Obviously, there are um, operations taking place or, you know, payments being made throughout the year, but we just make end of the year to, to facilitate the calculations, we're going to write it as the end of the year amounts. Okay. So we're going to total them for the end of the year. So this is what we anticipate we're going to need. Um, and that will also have to go into our analysis. Okay. So we have here, I'm going to make this green as well. So we're going to call this stuff up here related to income or net operating cash flows. Up here on the green, I'm this is going to refer to investments. Notice everything's an investment, the capital expenditure for the machines, the um the money we get when we sell it at the end, and then this is also an investment to pursue this project. The, um, the third thing, there's gonna be three things. So it's gonna be red, green, and then blue is the depreciation. I'm just gonna put it in blue. Oh, no, it's not blue. Because of being able to depreciate the asset, we can generate tax savings. And that tax saving amount is a cash flow, right? So it's going to increase our net income. So that's going to be a cash flow and that has to be considered, but I'm putting it in blue because it needs to be separated from the rest. All right, so how in the world are we going to put all this together? We're going to go we're going to first combine the uh the red items. Then we're going to talk about the investment, the green items, and then I'm going to show you about the tax shield. Are you ready? I think I'm going to do it on my iPad because I have it all written out in a in a slide presentation. I'll put up the slide presentation, but I'll, I'll just do it in the iPad so we can go step by step. And then I'll put up both onto the platform when I'm done. 
Do you want to take a five minute break? I'm going to set up my iPad. You guys can get something to drink or munch on. Okay. Yeah, I'll be right back. See why that was my son. <laughs> she says, How old is your son, Lydia? Oh, he's 19. He's tall. Wow. He's, he's very tall. Oh. He's six two. 
Wow. Does he play basketball? No, he actually likes soccer. He plays soccer. That's my husband yelling at the dogs in the background because they don't stop barking. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You have a 19-year-old son? You look too yeah. young. What do you... Yeah. Rupa is not too young. Huh? I, I'm not that young. Too young. I have a 26-year-old like... daughter, too. You, you look like you're she 25. 26-year-old like... daughter. You My look like you're six. You look like you're thirty-five. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> oh, I wish. I wish. I know. I'm too old to be in school. I'm tired already. <laughs> no, my daughter's twenty-six. My my middle one, he's nineteen, and my youngest is fifteen. Twenty-six. Hmm. Your oldest is twenty-six. My daughter's twenty-six. Yeah. Oh. You so, assuming, so assuming you you got married, you got your child at twenty, so you're forty six. No, but... no, she's older than. Are you, wait, okay, you could say that. <laughs> you could say that. <laughs> Romy, you look really young. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Has that ever been a problem for you? People don't take you what? seriously. People don't take you seriously. No, they don't. They're like, "Are you serious?" I'm like, "No, my daughter's twenty six. <laughs> That's, that's crazy. Okay, that's so okay. this is the case. All right, so let's start with um Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Oh my hmm. All right, so I'm going to take the red. And we're going to make um, a table, a schedule, or um, call it a table. And we're going to call this table income. And this is also going to be in thousands of dollars. We're not seeing what you're trying to show us. Oh, it's it's not appearing. That's weird. We're seeing just the case study that we're working on. That's weird. Let me try that again. I pressed the wrong thing there. Okay. Now you can see. Should I do it in thousands of dollars or do you prefer I just put in the millions of dollars numbers? I'm okay with the zeros. Not having the zeros or having the zeros? You can leave the zeros. Okay, I'll. All right, so let's do. Um... I don't think you'll be able to put all the zeros with the space you have. You don't think so? I can shrink things. I can expand things. All right, so we begin with sorry. 
Um, the first part, the revenues from ticket sales. So where's that going to go here? I'm going to put, oops. I'm going to put a heading and call it cash flows. CFs from ticket sales. Not ticket sales, sorry, from from services. How oh, far? So cash flows from MRI services. So what's gonna go here? Revenues. I'm not gonna call it sales, I'm just gonna call it revenues. What do I put? It's uh, 6,000 times 2,000. That's 1,000, 12 million. Right, 12 million. Minus. No, just in this column, I'm gonna put revenues first. Okay. And the second year? Um, 28 million. And the third year? 40 million. And the fourth year? 24 million. Can you guys see everything or is it covered by the, by our faces? I see everything, I think. Okay, everybody knows where those numbers came from. So it was the uh, amounts times per unit. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do we put next? The... What about you know, the, the 100? Yeah, the last you know, the. The 100, 200, 400, 300, I think we can put that one. Lost revenue. Lost revenues, okay. And we're gonna call that a side effect of our project. If you see that term terminology, it's a side effect of the project. Year zero is over here because nothing happens in year zero, but I'm gonna put it in my, I'm gonna put it at the bottom when we tally. So I have a space for it. Okay, so how much is uh, lost revenue? Yeah, one is 200,000. Right. So it's 2,000 times 100, which is 200,000. Second year? 400,000. Third year, eight hundred thousand. Everybody knows what Ty is doing. Yes, yeah, she's just doubling. Yeah, she's just doing this multiplied by these, and then six hundred thousand. Okay, so we've done that. Now let's look at the costs or the expenses, right? So operating costs. What do we have? Oh. So 1,000 by 6,000. That's six million. I hope I'm correct. Okay, so you're going to do the the variable costs, right? So for each ticket, oh, sorry, and these were all negative, right? Sorry, up here, those were lost revenue, so I have to be a negative or an accounting. 
We put brackets around it, remember? Yes. Let's do the accounting thing. Let's do it the accounting way. Uh, I think for now it's okay so that I would remember. Okay, I'll, I'll leave the negative. I'll leave the negative. Um, okay, so the variable costs are the cost of flying. It's not flying. <laughs> I keep on remembering the other example of uh, providing services. So the MRIs. So that's going to be the, um, the $1,000 each for the service of these here. Right. So it's just going to be the numbers you see there. So six million and um, fourteen million. Ten million and twenty million. Twenty million. And twelve million. Twelve million. And then what else? The annual rental cost. Okay, wait a second. So you just took care of the expense of, of these people or these services. What about the expense of these services here? Okay. So... Two hundred million in the first come. Well, it's going to be um so the variable cost of the side effect. But because we're not offering those services, we actually save the cost. Does that make sense? These are going to be negative. Right. So we're going to multiply a thousand by a hundred and get a million. Or a hundred, sorry. Is that right? A thousand by a hundred thousand. Yes, a hundred thousand. Sorry, yeah. And then so that'll be a negative. And this the next one will be two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. And then the next one will be four hundred thousand. The negative. And then three hundred thousand. And then you mentioned the building. The office space. How do it's we one minute? That? Right. So because we're going to use this office space for ourselves and we're not going to make the revenue of a million dollars from somebody else, um, we have to put that in because we need to do better than that million dollars because we're losing a million every year. Sorry, that's not a negative because I put it under expenses or costs. So it's not negative. We're going to subtract it from the revenues though. Everyone's okay so far? Yeah. All right, so now you're going to take revenues minus expenses in each year and get for me what we're going to call EBDT. It's called earnings before depreciation so it's and taxes. Not, 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 
So now you see why the zeros are not necessary. <laughs> they just more numbers to punch in your calculator. You don't have to put the zeros in. The first one you should have 4,900,000. Can I know how you got that? So it's 12 minus 200, and then I minus all of these. For some, I'm like the 6 million is a positive. The 1 million is in positive. But, but I'm subtracting expenses. So I'm going to do revenues minus expenses. I don't understand that. So what's the essence of the negatives on them? I could have done it another way, but it was just to account for everything we marked up here. So this would be a negative revenue. It's a lost revenue. Um, this would be cost savings. So that's why that one's a negative. But... So like I thought it would be 12 billion plus 6 million plus 1 million, that's 19 million minus... 300,000. Yeah, so you're going to do 12 million minus two, well, 12 million minus 6 million minus 1 million. It's five, so okay. So that's five, and then five million, and then minus 200,000 plus 100,000. So wait. I don't, I don't get how you did the minus plus at all. I'm sorry. So it's a 12 million minus 7 million. That's 500. If you want to go, if, if you want to, I'm just trying to do it the way you mentioned. So you took 12 and six, but this is subtracted because this is an expense. Everything here is subtracted. So 12 yeah, minus but what six about the fact minus that the one. Minus, what about the fact that the minus 100 doesn't that become plus if you're minus minus? Yeah. Still works. Okay, like, so let me try to do that. If you did just... 12 minus 6 minus 1 and... We have 5 million. 200 negative plus 1. Okay, I get it now. I get it, it now. Okay. Yes. So you guys can also see why you don't need to put the zeros on, right? It just gives you more work punching that in. So yeah, get all of them for me. That's him. Okay, come back. Is it 8.8 .8 mil? Which one? The next one? Or the total? What did you do? This next one, Patty? Eight. So this is 28. I have 12.8 12. Oh, yeah. 12, 12, um, 12 mil. That's correct. Twelve. It's 12.8. Patty, where what did you get? Twelve point eight. Are we are we subtracting that four that four million on top? Yeah, uh four hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. I, don't, I hope I'm not too messy here. I'm gonna fix these up. Four hundred. So the other one is nineteen six. No, close. Okay, I'm going to do it again. 40 minus 20. 10. Okay. 
Can you go about year three, please? Uh, what did you say? Can you go over year three, please? Mm -hmm. So 40 million. Minus 20. Minus 20. I'm just doing it the way you're doing it. Yeah. And then minus the one. So that's 19. 19. And so then, 19 minus. Yeah. So it's 19. Minus 800. That's 19, two. Then plus four. That's 19, six. So that's why I said 19, six. So it's going to be 19 minus 800,000. Oh, sorry, I missed. <laughs> so 18.6. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. I don't mind. I don't mind. It's like you're doing it in in a very efficient way. Um, so yeah, she's just combining common terms, right? She's putting the millions together and the hundreds of thousands together, just easier to calculate than one at a time, punching it all in. So you get 18,600,000. So the last is 10,7. Yes. 10,700,000. So some people would call this net revenue, like revenue less expenses. Some people say net revenue is um, after depreciation, after taxes. So I, I, I avoid saying net, but um, this is very clear. Like, so it's revenues minus expenses or, or earnings before any depreciation or taxes are paid. But in fact, we have to pay taxes on all this, right? Yes. So what I need for my capital budgeting analysis so, so this is what it is, capital budgeting. We're purchasing equipment and budgeting for it to see if it's worth it. That's what we're doing here. Um, so let's do the earnings before depreciation and taxes after taxes. If the, ta if the corporate tax rate is 40%, that's what TC means, corporate. Tax rate. So this is for a, a for profit entity. The little C stands for corporate because there's other kinds of taxes. Um, so how much will I retain out of this if? 40% is paid in taxes. So we write one minus TC. This is this means um, whenever you see one minus TC, it means after taxes. Mm -hmm. You've accounted for taxes. So in our an example here, we have to multiply each of these values by 0. 0.6 to get the this uh this amount here. Six, four, eight. Two point nine four million in the first one. Yes. I put the zero point six, and then seven point six eight million. 
Oh my God. Everyone's very quiet except for TY. Is everybody okay? Are you working at it? It's clear. And the next one, 18.6 times 0. 0.6. So 11. 11. 11.6. 11. 11. Yep. 11.160. 1, 6, yeah. Mm -hmm. And finally, 6,420,000. Okay, so what do we do with these numbers? <laughs> Professor, where did the zero, where did the 0. 0.6 come from? Okay, so what we have to do, this is this is the earnings that we have. However, we have to pay taxes. So taxes are 40%. We only get to keep 60% of this amount. So that's why I did 0. 0.6. It's one minus 0. 0.4. It's one minus- That makes it easier. Yeah. Is that okay, Romy? Romy froze. I hope that's okay. So this is this is what you have to do. You have to take the tax rate and and subtract it from one to have what you what you retain. You only keep 0. 0.6. Okay. So what do we do with these numbers? If we relate back, when we see a set of cash flows over time, what do we do? We want to add them up, but we can't just add them, right? It's like, a, I forgot the fraction, C1 over something over C1. Right, right, the function, yeah. But this yeah. is not an annuity because the numbers are different. So we have to use the other mixed cash flow formula, the NPV. Remember the NPV? So put these in Excel and you can get that. Oh my God. But just don't forget that there's a year, this is starting at year one. So you got to put, you know, year zero. In the NPV and Excel, I don't think you need year zero. You just start with one, two, three, and four. Yep, you can't forget anything I teach you. It always comes back. <laughs> oh my gosh. And get me the, the present value. So you guys take time to figure that out while well, I'll sit here. So I put a one here because this is just the first part. There's three parts to this analysis. We're going to spend another 50 minutes doing it for sure. I'd like to finish the case so it's done and you can review it. Well, we don't have a rate here. Oh, I didn't, I uh, I gave it in the case. Um, let me see what it is. 10%. So it says, assume the required rate of return for this project is 10%. So use, um, So sorry, in this case, are we going to use all the zeros or we can just use if you know what you're just... doing, If you know what you're doing, you don't have to put all the zeros in. Yeah. You just have to remember that it's in thousands of dollars when you're done. So if I put this in Excel, I'll do it too. And then we'll compare.
Is it three hundred and forty thousand? I don't know. Let's just put the zeros. Let's see what did other people get. Let's I'll put, put all the zeros. <laughs> I kind of doubt that it gets the same without the zeros, <laughs> so I'm going to do it with the zeros. It's how much did you say? I I felt I had. Point, point three four, but no, when no. I did it without the zeros, so it's three hundred and forty thousand. If I was adding, if I did it with zeros, yeah, no, that's not correct. Okay. So, five, you have to put Wait. it as a decimal, right? Point zero, point one. So three, four, five, six. So, okay. I have three thirty two. Nope. Thousand and no, something's wrong. Something's okay, wrong. so what formula okay. are you using? What what uh, function I are you using? NPV. I use Excel, so I don't have to plot in anything. I just put equals NPV and I added the values. Yeah. Well, you did something wrong. Oh, I know what I did wrong. <laughs> I it? didn't put my rate as um oh, zero on the decimal. One. <laughs> yeah, that that's why I mentioned it because that would really mess things up. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my Excel. Zero point three four. And I just put it in thousands of dollars. Okay, so I'll put in thousands of dollars. So there's my Excel NPV. 0.1 and then uh, 2 million 940 that's in thousands of dollars 7 680 11 million 160 and 6 million 420 and then it gives me 21 million 789 45 if you want to put all the zeros in you can do that too. Oh. So it's 217 million? 21 million, 789. Oh, 21 million. Okay, yeah. I got it. Yeah, if, you, if you just want to put the zeros in, it's easier for now. Just do that. You can read these numbers. Okay, so we have found out that we generate... Um, I didn't have 21 million. I had 22 million, one, two, zero, zero, three, two, seven, eight. You punched something in wrong. Okay. So that will give you the present value of earnings before depreciation, really net operating cash flows before depreciation. So it's not exactly profit because we haven't talked about investment yet. We haven't talked about, right? So it's just an, a measure of the income piece. We haven't talked about profit because we have to do the investment that we made and include the tax savings. Okay, let me know when you got that so I can get to the next part. Professor? Oh, yes. Professor? Yes. Question, just... It's so a question. When you're doing um, the cash flows from MI services and then the lost revenue, which is the minus 200 
the four million, that one. We don't count that one, is it? Because it's a lost revenue. We have to count it because because it's going to affect us. We have to try and we have to check to make sure that all the losses are worth it. Basically, we have to put all the, the anticipated losses here as well. Economic costs, opportunity costs, everything has to go in there. So, so yeah. let's so for this first so for the first column, I'm subtracting the 12 million minus the 200,000 yeah. minus the 6 million yeah. minus the 100,000 no, no, minus plus. the million. No, this becomes a plus. Because I did it twice and I didn't get that 4,900,000. <laughs> um, okay, tell me again. 12 million. Okay, do it as we talk. Okay, 12 million. Yeah. Minus 200,000. Minus six, six million. Six million. And then right. plus minus one hundred million. Plus one hundred thousand. So the variable costs are added. Because it is a loss saving. I mean a lost cost. It's a cost saving, so it's added because we get it to keep it. We don't lose it. Because these are all expenses. I put oh, them so together. that's why I was because I was like, how did you get that? Okay. I, I agree it's confusing, so but just for this illustration, I do it like this and do it another way if, if it's better for you, but get the sense that yeah, it's an expense that we don't have to incur. So we have savings there. It's a positive cash flow. So it's a plus. No wonder mm -hmm. was I was like, what are they doing that I'm getting the wrong numbers? Okay, mm -hmm. I see now. So it's a that's a long body. Can I see your Excel on that? Um, yeah. Can I see how you did it on Excel? Yes. Lydia, how are you doing? I'm still digesting. I'll, I, I probably have to review it. It's okay. I have the video recording, so you can check it. Okay. It's a I thought I did wrong now. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Got it, T.Y. Yes, thank you. Are you okay, Patty? Sorry, I was muting the wrong side of the thing. I did. I got the first one when you did it the first time. Okay, good. Good. So I'm going to go to the next part, right? Ready for the green investment? Okay, so this is a little longer. You're like, what is she talking about? That was long enough. But...
All right, so we're going to look at now what I'm going to call investment. This is part two. So for the investment, we need to spend a million dollars on four machines. So it's $4 million. And then we're going to, um, in the fourth year, we're going to get 300,000, which we need to compare against the book value of the depreciated items. So we need to make a table called the depreciation schedule, depreciation table. And it goes like this. We start with the year. What year should we start in? What year do we earn depreciation or can we claim depreciation? <clears throat> year one, Seven. end of year one. End of year one, right? Because we need a whole year to pass mm -hmm. before we can claim depreciation. So, mm -hmm. and we're gonna use end of year a calendar year, but companies can pick a different end of year, but we're going to use uh, the end of calendar year. Um, cause that's how we pay taxes. So, um, the first column is going to be the depreciation rate, little d. So that's the rate. And I'm going to get this number from that table that I, I flashed in front of you, but I will put that table up. It's called the maker's table. Makers stands for it's it. They actually, it's actually a very user-friendly tool that's provided to make these calculations. We'll get the name. We'll see. Thank you. Modified, modified accelerated cost recovery system. That's what makers is. So I'm just going to flash it here. So I'm going to take the first, oh, how, how long is the project? It's four years. I only need four. So I'm going to copy the number 0 0.143 and then 0 0.245, 0 0.175, and 0 0.125. And what we're going to do is calculate big D, which is the amount we're going to, we're going to claim as a loss or expense. This is the actual depreciated dollar amount. And it's going to be calculated as the initial investment cost of the capital cost, capital expenditure, capital cost, and we multiply it by the little D. So what was the capital cost for us? It was the 21,000. Pastor, can you change your screen? Yeah, sorry. It was right, I, I was making my table without telling you. Okay, here's the table. So those are the rates. And then this is D capital D and all I have to do is multiply the cost of the of the machines by the rate in each year to find out what D is the capital cost is how much 85,000 
No. No, the capital is the machines. The capital expenditure is what we spend on the machines. So how much is it? Initially, what do we buy? One million? Weren't they one million? One million each and we're buying four. Yeah, so four million. Yeah, so four million. Now take four million times the depreciation rate and all the way down. So you realize you can do this in Excel, right? This this can all be done in Excel, but we're going to do it manually for now. Five hundred and seventy-two thousand for the first one. Perfect. Yeah. And the next one. Nine eighty thousand. So the thing to remember is here is you're always multiplying by the four million. And this number is going down. Why is the number going down? Recession, I think. Because the asset, the remaining balance of the asset has gone down. So that's what these numbers are taking care of. It's declining the balance of the asset that you have. So, um, yeah. 500,000 for the last one. And the last one, 500,000. So what we do with these numbers, we can determine, so this is called, I'm gonna make a column here called UCC. That stands for, I'll write it up here because I don't have space for the rest. So that's called the undepreciated cost of capital. So capital, again, the machines, that we're expensing over time, that we're allowed to expense and claim depreciation for. So that's gonna be, after the first year, what is the undepreciated cost of capital? In other words, what's left? In, what's the value, the remaining book value, like in the accounting system, what's the remaining value of the asset if we depreciate 572,000? Three million four thirty-eight thousand. I think I don't know. You remove it. Okay. Let me check my numbers here. Oh, I think four twenty-eight. I'm sorry. Yeah. I think it's 428. Yeah. Okay. And what's left in the second year? 3 million and 20. Now you have to take 3,428 and subtract 980,000. Notice this is more. Why oh. is this more in the second year than the first year? The depreciated value before is like, it's higher. It's 0.245. Right. It's higher because in the first year, I could only depreciate it half, right? It was 28.6%, but I could only depreciate it half of it for the first year. So that's why it's smaller. All right. So then in the second year, I get that it's uh, 2 million is left, 448,000. And then minus another 700,000. One, seven, four, eight. Right. One, two, four, eight. Okay, I'll let everybody check the numbers. And we'll talk about this. This is called now the book value. So all of these are the book value, but this is the remaining book value at the fourth year. So 
So that's for four MRI machines. What if we just get the value of one? How much is one of them? Divide that. Would you divide that by four or no? Yeah, just divide it by four. Yep. That's awesome. I mean, that's the value in the fourth year. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be 312,000 awesome. each. What number do I compare that to? The initial 4 million? Uh, well, this is going to happen in the fourth year. I'm going to, I'm, I have a book value of 312,000 and I'm anticipating I can sell it for 300,000 each. 300,000. So what's going to happen? It's the loss. The loss. It's a loss. Exactly. It's a loss. And that's an, that's, um, a loss sheet that you could also claim and you can make tax savings. And that's also a cash flow. December 31st. And on this one, yes, <laughs> this is all going to happen at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So this has a name. Does anybody know the name of this? What we call the 300,000? Or do you know? The 300,000 is called the salvage value, what we can sell for. Or you can also call it the market value at the fourth year. I'm still in class getting up at 8.30. What happened? I'm sorry. What happened to you? Sorry, someone was calling me and I forgot I wasn't muted. Okay, okay. Okay, so we have the $4 million purchase we have the sale in the fourth year that we, we're going to also be able to claim expenses for. And um, so, or explain, uh, claim a loss. So how does this tally up? Oh, and also what about this? We have to take care of this. Now, what do we do with this? So this is called, this is an investment, but it's an investment in current, or networking capital, current assets my, minus current liabilities is known as uh, networking capital. So I'm gonna write that out. So what I need to do <clears throat> I'm going to take this I'm going to take this wait I'm going to take it from the initial case All right, so what we have to do is take current assets minus current liabilities to determine what the networking capital requirements are. So this is gonna be subtracted. These two are gonna be subtracted and those ones added. What do you get? 
So I'm going to go by year. I, I can just put it, the numbers underneath. I'm going to write that because it's so messy. I'm going to do it in black. So the first one, first block 160,000. Yes. Yeah. DY, go a little slower for the others. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You don't have to be sorry. I just uh, I want to give them a chance to get it right or wrong. Again, you know, you can ignore the zeros and just use the first digits. Or you could use Excel, then you have to type it all in. Two forty for the second one, or for year one, two forty. Two forty for the second one. The second one, but it's end of year one. Three hundred for the next one. Uh huh. 220. Yep. And zero. Don't forget the zero. You need that zero. All right. So always, always the last year, you don't need anything at the end of the last year for networking capital. In other words, all of these assets, current assets and current liabilities, um, the the amounts or the value of them goes back to the firm. So if there's inventory, the inventory goes back to the firm. You know, the cash goes back to the firm, right? So so we it releases these funds back to the firm. Not just uh so so we're just doing an analysis on this project, but the firm has other projects that it's operating. It has other functions, other things that it's doing. So um we're right now we're looking at this from the perspective of the project itself. The project requires these amounts. But remember, we're doing an incremental cash flow analysis. So what we're really interested in over the years um, is a uh, is the changes, the increments. So we're gonna have inventory set aside. When we use it, it affects expenses, right? Cause we had it, we talked about inventory and it's not um, an expense until we use it. And all of that's accounted for in the other calculations I gave you or the other amounts, right? With expenses and revenues. So that's all accounted for. But so every year we're gonna start with this amount of inventory, but how much more, how much more in each year is what I'm interested in. So it's 60,000 up front, 160,000 up front. Mm -hmm. How much more do I need in year one? So it goes from 160 to 240. So 240 minus 160 is 8,000. 8, and we're in the second year, it'll be $300,000 worth of networking capital required. It was 240, so that's an additional 60,000. Okay. And it's going to go from 300,000 to 220. Ah, now it's going down. So yeah. remember, we're winding the project down. 
So that's going to be negative 80,000. 80, and then finally, the, the project wraps up. So the 220. Um, it's negative 220. So we don't need 220. So those are the networking capital changes. That's what I call it. And the last step is to look at this from the perspective of the firm because the firm is making the decision to pursue this project. So I was just looking at this. The project needs this. These are the changes each year or the incremental cash flows. So then finally, what are Sorry, the can I ask why you're making it negative to 20? Um, because it's zero minus, zero minus. I'm doing this minus, this minus, this. Oh, minus. oh, I get So you. I don't need two twenty dollars, two hundred twenty thousand dollars anymore for this project for the networking capital. That's what it means. I no longer need that amount. So networking capital investment cash flows is my final step. There's like a three step process, which just makes me change the sign. I just changed the sign across the board. I have to invest 160,000 immediately. I have to invest an additional 80,000 at the end of the, well, at the beginning, sorry, these are end of the year, end of the first year. And then at the end of the second year, I have to invest an additional, right? Because investments are negatives, negative cash flows. Sorry, and does it mean anything that, um? That line of NWC changes, if you added everything, it all becomes zero. Does that mean anything? Is that significant? Um, I guess because we, is that what you get? Yeah, if you added 160 plus 80, that's 240. 240 plus 60 is 300 minus 80, that becomes um, 220. 220 minus 220, zero. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if it was significant. Well, um, well, the fact is that these are all happening at different points in time. Cause so you can't really add okay. them. Okay. Right. Because of time value of money. Okay. But probably I have to think about that. What you just re realized, but okay. So then this is plus 80,000. So I'm just changing the sign ladies, 22, 20. And this is a plus. So again, what does it mean? that we have to invest these amounts in the first two years, and then these amounts are released back to the firm. And what do you wanna do with those numbers? What do we do over here? So in this case, when we finished, we calculated the NPV of income or the PV of income that I come to call it. And we did like a, an NPV, the NPV formula. In the calculator, I'm sorry, in Excel. Right, and what did we get for the first part? Going back for a second, I didn't write it down. Two point twenty-one million, twenty-one million, twenty-one million seven eight nine four five four point two seven. Okay, so that's what we got. The first one that was the first part. And we're going to do it again. So we have these amounts. We have to deal with the tax um, savings from the sale of the asset and the sale of the asset. And we also have the purchase of the assets. So we're going to put those together. We can put them on a table. Let's do a table and then we'll do the... Um, you could do this in pieces, but let's put it in a schedule. So... What happens in year zero, year one, year two, three, 
year four. So in terms of investment, what happens in year zero? Of this page, what everything on this page, what happens in year zero? Thank you, Thank you. So we have this amount here. We have something going on here. And we have that thing up there. We've got to put them together. So where do they happen in time? Let's put them all onto the timeline. So what happens in year zero for investment? We purchase the MRIs. So it's immediate, we call it capital spending or capital expenditure for the MRIs was 4 million. And then what else happens? I can put it in different uh, different rows so it was separated. So what about um, networking capital? investment cash flows. I'm gonna put them all across here. So this one is negative 160. This is negative 880,000. This is negative 60,000. And then this one is 22,000. Oh, no, I missed something. You missed the 80. What did I miss here? 160, oh, because it's all shifted over. Oh, and shifted over. Zero. Yeah, I got to go back. I got to go back here. That's why I warned you about the one and zero thing. Okay, so that's that's there. And then 60 and this 80. And this is 220. And then what else happens? Sale of the asset at the end. So the salvage effect. I'm going to call it the salvage effect. We're going to sell the asset and get 300,000 times four, right? I'll just put... Let me make sure. Is it three hundred thousand? Where did you get the three hundred thousand? From here, remember? Each machine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Three hundred thousand. So let's do that. Let's put three hundred thousand times four. One point two. Yeah. I'll make an equation and then we'll simplify. It. And then what? Uh, what happens is, and that's going to be in the fourth year. And then we have to deal with the fact that we have to pay taxes on the difference. I'm sorry, we, we're going to claim taxes. So there's a, I'm gonna write it here. There's a little formula that helps you calculate what you have to do here. So you gotta pay taxes on the difference of the book value and the salvage value. That's the equation. <clears throat> So taxes are 4%, 40%. The book value is 1.2 million, but the salvage, sorry, the book value is 1.248, right? So it's 1.248,000 minus 1.2 million. So whatever this number is, so I'm, I'm going to just make this, this one is uh, the 1.2 million. So put it all together and that number goes there. So this is just uh, 48,000, right? That we have to pay taxes or sorry, we're going to get tax savings from. So you see, that's how it works out.
So to figure out, so this equation helps you figure out whether or not, you know, depends. If the book value exceeds, you see you're going to get tax savings. If the book value is exceeded when with the purchasing or salvage value price, um, then you get this becomes a negative and you have to pay taxes. So I'm supposed to end in like five minutes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this. If you guys have to go, you go, or you want to go, you could go. I'm just going to finish this. And I'm going to ask you to try and finish the case yourself and just check back with this video. Okay. So then you can review it and let me know if you have any questions um, during the week. Hmm? What if it seems like the answer is going to be one 1.248 million, like the initial whatever we got before. Yeah. Okay. And that's because, that's and that's because um, we're getting the money for the asset. And then we're going to get tax savings of the difference here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move that over and then put the actual number in there. It's going to work. That's what I call the salvage effect. So you can say A, B, C. Salvage effect. So I get 1.219 million. Two hundred thousand, is that right? So this is because of <clears throat> And then <clears throat> um, just get the values here so then you can put them in the NPV. I don't know how you got the one. 1.219 that value because you multiply here 0.4 multiplies 48,000 this when i have nothing here it's a multiply oh uh, if, if, you, if you didn't follow so i just realized that maybe you didn't get it you guys didn't understand what i was doing that's multiplication there that's that's what this is this when i write it like this 
So this is 19,200. Okay, so I have it now. Great. So this, this, um, this equation here, is called the salvage effect, or I'm gonna call it the salvage effect. And it all happens in the last year. Okay, I'm still not okay with something. Mm -hmm. So 0 0.4 by 48,000 is 19,200. So if you were adding that to, oh, oh, you're correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. That was crazy. It's funny. Yeah, you guys can just watch. If you have to go, just go. I'm going to finish it, though, just so it's done. It's just for you. How to... many minutes? Cause... Do you have to go? If you have to go, just go. I'm going to finish it just so it's complete in one video, not separated in another video. But uh, I think um, it's going to be 15 more minutes. I could do it faster if you guys don't try and do it with me. <laughs> you do it faster, so, I mean, I could just do it and you guys can look at it later. So basically I need to add these up, you know, add these going down or I can do them in three separate parts. Um, so since I've done them in a table already, I might as well add them up going down. So this is going to be 4 million minus 160,000 in year zero. Oh, sorry. No, this is a negative, right? That's a negative 4 million. So we have to buy the, the equipment, the MRIs. So together, that's going to be negative 4 million 160, 000. zero, zero. And then this one is going to just be 80,000. Negative, 60,000 negative, 80,000. And then these okay. add to be um, 1,439,000. Mm -hmm. And then you put those into the formula for NPV. Okay. You can put them in Excel. I'm going to write the equation. So the NPV is equal or the NPV of income or investment, sorry, is equal to upfront 4,160. And then, mm -hmm. and then, what rate are we working with here? What's that? I think it's ten percent. Wasn't it ten percent? Yeah. Okay. So I'm writing the equation, that, which is what you get out of Excel. So you put those numbers in Excel and give me a number. What do you get? Negative one eight five five to five. No. Excited something wrong. Yeah. Okay, I see what I did wrong. Should be negative three million. 
239-215-90. So I'll tell you what's wrong. Remember that the NPV in Excel, this is really important. The NPV in Excel starts in the first year. You actually have to take off the million of the initial investment from the NPV, remember. Um, so NPV in Excel is gonna start here. So you have to put this one in by yourself. So you have to put in Excel equals NPV 0 0.1, and then uh, negative 80 and 60, negative 60, and then 80 and 1439, 200. But then you have to subtract, or let's put it at the beginning. No, I guess we'll subtract. So then, and then subtract the 4,160,000. Because NPV only works with these. So where are you putting the 4 million, 4 million one sixty? Just after, just after it. Minus. Oh. Uh... Oh, and if you if you can't put the commas, don't, I'm just putting it to, for presentation, but you probably might not you might not be able to put the commas in Excel. And then you'll get my answer. So it's really important to remember what Excel is giving you. Because yes. that's your initial investment. So initial investment, capital expenditure, capital outlay, capital cost. Those all mean the same thing. It refers to your investment in equipment. Oops. In it, in capital that you can depreciate. All right, so we have, this is part two. So can I know what your answer is here? I, I put it here already. Oh, three, two, let me see what I have on it. I have three, two, four, eight, two, one, five, point nine. I have this one. So I see something. The very last step can go very quickly. So that was one income, NPV income. This is two NPV investment. And the third thing is to get those savings from depreciating the asset, which I can calculate up above. So I'm going to go back to this table that I made and I want to calculate the tax savings each year. Remembering what, what we did before to find out the tax savings of the loss, we just multiplied it by the tax rate. It's the same thing here. These are the depreciated amounts and we just have to multiply them by the tax rate. So I'm going to put a column. I'm going to add a column. I'll put it black add a column and I write tax shield or tax shield, which is the tax rate times the big D. So each year, we're going to save a bunch of money. you make this calculation, in the first year, you're going to save 228,000 
$800. In the second year, you're going to save $392,000. In the third year, it's going to be $280,000. And in the final year, you're going to save $200,000. And what do I do with those numbers? So you see a stream of cash flows, an NPV again. You're going to do the NPV. And that will be part three. Let me, um, I'm going to carry this all to another page so I can make that calculation. And I want to check, make sure that was a negative, right? The investment was a negative 3 million. Let me make a point before I do the last part and you understand the significance of what we're done here. The investment is a negative 3 million. You see? Mm -hmm. What was the income? 21 million. Just a second. Does everybody get that? Are you guys caught up? So at this point, what is the NPV so far? Income was 21 million. Investment was 3 million. The NPV is... Eighteen mil? I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 positive. Is the point I'm trying yeah, to make? Yeah, it's, it's a positive. positive. Eighteen mil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so the tax shields are just going to be more positive. So this is totally worth it. This project is totally worth it. Okay, like we already know that, but let's just get the full value so that we know what it's worth and and we can you know continue budgeting and planning for other things. Um. So the last the last bit. Um. So all we have to do for the last part is I'm going to call it part three, present value or NPV of- uh, Can you just tell me one thing? Yeah. For the first part in the tax shield area, the what what values did you use to get the value? The tax rate times D, so 0. 0.4. I just did 0. 0.4. 4. Yeah, okay. 0. Awesome. 0.4 times D. Okay. It's just it just like we did with the um salvage effect. It was a point four. Okay. So I'm gonna say plural tax shields because there's many of them. And it starts at year one, right? Because depreciation took a year. Um, so it's gonna be twenty two uh two two two. Two two eight zero zero over one point one three nine two. I'm just writing this for your sake, um, but basically, you know, you can go into an Excel and get this value plus two eight zero 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 one point one three and two hundred thousand. Yeah. And put those in Excel. So in Excel, it's going to be NP equals NPV 0 0.1 comma 228800 comma 392000. I'm going to leave the commas out because I don't know if it's affecting your entry. And then 280000, And what do you get?
the eight seven eight nine three seven one. I don't know. Yep, exactly. Eight seven eight nine three seven seven eight. And then this will be the last one. It's a positive. So what we have to do finally is add all three up. So I'll go get all three for the final tally. But I know it's positive because it was already positive. So I have to calculate one plus two plus three makes the total NPV of the project. So it was like 21 million minus, if I wanna be picky about it. What's this one? Plus this one. It's a negative value. No, no. No, because the income was positive. So, and this one was negative, but the pluses. But it's so high in the positives that it saves the problem. Very worth it. It's very much worth it. Yeah. About twenty million. Yeah. So, so that's that. Okay, so continue. I'm going to put up um some more week, uh, are we week six materials or week seven materials? So we're going to move forward. Um, I, this is like budgeting, but um, it's okay. I just want to do this example so you could see depreciation in action. You could feel like, you know, you saw the networking capital, assets and liabilities. You just got a feel for what you do with this kind of information. All right. And we're going to continue with our, our um, review of accounting. And then um, we're getting into, I kind of remember. Let me see. Um. So I, I, yeah, budgeting concepts. Okay. So for oh. this week, I'm going to put up some, I think I'm going to switch seven and eight. I'm going to put up budgeting concepts for this week. And then next week we can talk about uh, strategic management. So, and I'm going to still say some more things about chapter seven and financial statements. But, okay. So I'll just continue with your review of what I have put on the platform and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank oh, you. I didn't put a final number. I, I'm gonna put the final number up here so you have it. And I'm gonna put these up as well so you guys can review them. The final number is, uh, oh, it's right there, right? No, no, that's not the final number. <laughs> the final number is 19 million for anybody who was interested. It's very much worth it. Nineteen million four two nine one seven six point one five, and then you say NPV is greater than zero, so you must invest. Professor, you're going to post this recording. Yes, I will post a recording and post this, um, my handiwork, and uh, does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so have a good week. Check the platform. Thank you. Okay, Thank bye. You. bye.